He seems to be walking my way now, and there's another wolf there, and an another wolf there. Uh, give up on this for now. We guys, we guys. Ooh. Okay. Oh, matches, matches. This is super exciting. I think at this point we're going to add a piece of coal as we have quite a bit. And uh, it will really ramp up the temperature. We're now it feels like a plus 12, which is great. Or are we. Did I actually end up with hypothermia here? Oh no. Something's making me feel tired. Yeah, no kidding. This is uh, very sad. I. In the last moment, got hypothermia. Hello, people, and welcome to episode one, the beginning of a new The Long Dark survival mode interloper let's play series now this is a very challenging game in interloper mode and the hardest part of that mode is actually the beginning when you start with pretty much nothing which is what interloper is all about so we go into survival mode interloper and in this mode the world becomes more hostile the longer you survive which is great because well, it's usually the beginning that's the hardest anyway, and then after like a month or so, it becomes pretty boring and repetitive. I'm going to go with a male character this time, and uh, for feats, I think I will take Cold Fusion for the plus 2C bonus, which is very useful in the beginning, and even in the long run is quite useful as it does get colder and can make the difference between being inside and freezing to death, or being inside and just barely warming up. And then I think as my second feat I will take Efficient Machine, as this is a... Well, it is a feat that is not that useful necessarily at the start, but in the long run it's much more useful than something like, say, Fire Master, which only really serves you well at the start. But then it's becomes pretty useless later on and then you know we have torches and things like that in the game. Free Runner and Snowwalker are also very tempting feats to take but nevertheless I think I will go with Efficient Machine and we'll call this YouTube Interloper Season 1 and begin it. A mysterious geomagnetic storm has brought your plane crashing down into the northern Canadian wilderness. How long can you survive? It is hard to adapt to chaos, but it can be done. I am living proof of that. It can be done. Kurt Vonnegut in The Breakfast of Champions. Okay, so we start in what looks like the forlorn musk egg. And we are starting at a good time of the day. It is midday which should give me enough time to, I think, uh, gather some supplies and uh, perhaps find the farmstead before the night falls. This is certainly much better than starting off at the top of Timberwolf Mountain in the middle of a blizzard at the beginning of the night, which <laughs> is a start that can happen. The start are truly random in this game mode and they can range anywhere from fairly mild to absolutely brutal. In this case, well, it is kind of somewhere in between because, well, this is one of the two hardest maps to start off on. There is very little here. Not as little as there is in Timberwolf Mountain, but very close. Now, question is, should I go for the railway track, or should I go straight for... Hmm. Okay, I am starting very close to the actual Pleasant... Uh, not Pleasant Valley. Um, what's it called? Lake, a mystery lake map. 
um, with the tunnel entrance being right there and uh, I can go and scale down this cliff. However, I think it would be prudent to go and uh, check out that train rack before I move on. And ideally the uh, old farmstead too over there. Which, by the way, is one of the only two places in the game with a forge, and a forge is absolutely critical in this game mode because you do not get to find any tools, with I think with the exception of like the hammer and the saw. Everything else you are going to have to craft yourself in the forge, for which you need the hammer and uh, a forge, which you can only find here, as well as in. Um, that uh, lighthouse map, which is quite a long way away from here. So, I'm going to take those cattail stalks because that find some place to escape this cold. means having some calories, which is good. If and when I get to sleep, I will be able to regenerate some health, and health is life, literally, um, in this game. The lower your health, the more likely you are to die from things like wolf attacks. So you want to ideally always keep it as close to 100% as you possibly can, because the yeah, that can very much make the difference between surviving a wolf attack or a bear attack and uh, simply biting the dust. With that said, I already have uh, hypothermia risk as an affliction, and that's just how this game mode goes. But the temperature is minus 13. Uh, it's not great. It's not great. But... And you'll be thinking, why are you veering off course here all the time to get those bloody cattails? Well, because these cattails are an absolute lifesaver in terms of, uh, well, for one thing, having unperishable calories, which is extremely useful in this game, as all food normally perishes. And um, also, they are one of the only sources of food that you can get without hunting anything down and hunting does take time and skill and various things and harvesting the meat and so on and so on and um, also they provide some much needed tinder because if you start without the fire starting feet there is a good chance that you will fail on a lot of attempts to start a fire at the beginning because you start with level zero fire starting skill Yeah, break a leg. Oh, no shortage of cattails. I just really hope that I will find some goodies in that train. Now, the thing is, this train has a good chance of having some matches, and there is a wolf, which is disconcerting. Since he is that close to that train, and right between it and me, Nevertheless, I'm going to just have to see if I can wait him out or make a white berth around him. I really don't want to have a wolf attack right now because I do not even have a bandage to begin with, which just means finding some old piece of clothing and ripping it apart or finding an actual bandage, which is unlikely, but uh, he seems to be walking my way now. And there's another wolf there and an another wolf there. Yeah, and uh, I think circumventing all of them is not going to be very realistic, so I think I might actually go and uh, give up on this for now. Weak eyes, weak eyes. Ooh, barely made it. Yeah, um, there's weak eyes everywhere in this map. Um... It's easy to break in, and yeah, it does break very quickly, and when it does, you get instant hypothermia, and you might as well be dead. Um, you will be very cold. 
And you'll be instantly freezing and instantly going to have to recover somehow, somewhere. If you don't have fire, you know, you have all wet clothes and uh, it's terrible. Like, you really don't want to be breaking into the ice anywhere in the Canadian wilderness. Just a little tip there. Oh, yeah. Avoid it if you possibly can. I'm gonna go get this rose hips here. They are going to be useful as medicine as well as providing a few scant calories when ingested as tea. Now, here's more ice. I'm going to run across. Ah, that's not even weak ice. Good. So, I'm going straight for this old farmstead. Um, up any sticks along the way because that farmstead is uh, a place where a few goodies could be there is a bear there too but uh, I will see if I can get around here and uh, usually wolves patrol around this way to the farmstead there's one there on the very left but uh, since we've seen them all, like, on the way to the train track, we can assume that they're probably not that close by over here at this point. So you've got to always, you know, budget your time and figure out the best way to go. And I think uh, with the wolves being at the train track, they're probably not here. And I don't see any, which is great. Suspicions confirmed. Still, there is no place here to warm up anywhere on this map if you do not have fire of any kind. So finding mattress is going to be a huge priority. And if we don't find any here soon, we're going to have to run it to Mystery Lake, which may be... Hmm, I'm not going to get across the ice here. That's the question. Oh, I'm going to try. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of cans here. Another can. Eric, I can't wait to get home. Well, oh, buddy, I think you probably didn't. Just a bear there in the distance. Okay. Matches, please. Matches, matches, matches. Frozen corpse is nothing. Oh, that's interloper for you. You will find something only in maybe 20% of the things that you'd search in Interloper. It is very unforgiving. So you have to really look and search and... Yeah. Don't hold your breath. As far as finding goodies goes. More cattails and tinder. make it to this old farmstead. Search the shed. I don't even know if this was here before this. I thought, I think it was. Oh, that's quite a bit of coal. That is great. It is heavy, but it is amazing for warming up if you do actually find a way of lighting it. Matches, please. Matches. No matches. Always look the drawers sideways. Sometimes the devs like to hide things in the open drawers. But nothing today. Reclaim wood. I'll take it. More scrap metal. Come on. Matches. Matches. Nothing. Nothing. Just nothing. Alright. So, there's the old Spence family homestead. Two, two deer in the back. Um, no chances of me catching one of those at this point. No bow, no nothing. Ooh, a sewing primer book. Okay. Oh, matches! Matches! This is super exciting. 
Finding matches at this point in the game is the most important thing by far. Combat boots. Oh, that is great. Absolutely great. Now I'm going to take those boots and uh, put them on right away because, yeah, these decent running shoes. Well, turns out they are giving me a little more cold protection than the combat boots right now because of their state repair. Or should I say state of disrepair? A simple parka. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I'm going to need that. Oh, this is great. Plus one five, plus one five. Oh, this is immediately giving me a nice boost. More coal. Look at all this coal. Although it could be a prudent idea to leave the coal here in case this is needed for future um, forging activities in this forge. And I have quite a bit of coal already. Let's see, how much coal do I have? Uh, 10 pieces, 3 kilograms. Coal is something you usually can only find in the caves, which are quite far away from here. And lugging them away from like two maps away isn't the greatest thing. However, I will take it to for now. This stuff will come in handy. Very much needed bandage. Because having that coal now is going to be more important than later. I will be able to carry things later and I will quite possibly only forge inside the boat anyway. Uh, as that boat is a great place to be and uh, it's you know off the side of coastal highway and it has a lot of goodies anyway and um, also the hammer is quite likely to be nearby or oh, dog food yeah I'll take it I'll take it so I'll take it okay to crawling in here I'm going to walk up these planks and only to find the only bed in this entire map a note left behind if you want to read what the note says then please pause here because I'm not going to read it all out now oh, well actually I will take it now I could break these crates and uh, there would be a chance for some goodies being in there. However, this takes a long time without tools. One hour for one crate and uh, one hour 30 minutes for a large crate. And uh, that is a little too much time to be spending ripping things apart when you are still kind of freezing your butt off. Now you want to be careful with these planks that you don't harvest them because if you do you have no way of getting back up to that bed again. All that said, this stove actually provides quite a bit of warmth which can benefit you while you are trying to sleep here. It actually allows you to stay warm while you are sleeping. Forge temperature required 150 degrees. Um, okay. Is this no longer a fireplace? Ah, it is. Come on, take the charcoal. I could uh, actually survey the local area with it. So this is where we are. I'm going to check how we are for temperature. Pretty nice actually, pretty sweet. Minus three degrees is not too bad. However, I am about to experience hypothermia, which is a big problem and I will need water in the long run. So I'm going to have to go and bite the bullet and start a fire here. And uh, quite possibly I'm going to have to spend the night traveling after getting a little rest here and uh, cooking up some water. So we will start the fire. And see the firewood? I'll start with a stick. Come on, come 
on. Come on, indeed. And fires life out here. It has worked on the first attempt, which is great. Add some sticks. As these sticks do add about one degree of extra temperature each. And also, you will not be able to add coal until the forge has been burning for a little while. So let's look here. So, coal. I'm going to add one seed of firewood. You don't want to be carrying too many of those anyway, as they are quite heavy. And you see, if I want to add coal, it will say minutes before coal can be added, 20. And that's fine, because we will use that time to go and boil some water. Yes, yes. Alright, recycled can. At least something you start off with, and I believe this is now what you have to use to uh, boil your water. You can no longer... Water unsafe. Okay, cook. Cook, cook it. Okay. Snow, 18 minutes until melted. That is fine by me. Let's go and pass the time until it's ready. Now we have non potable water. And we have to. Ah, oh, I hear deer. It's the deer I hear. And then uh, take the potable water. See if we can already add uh, some more fuel. And I think at this point we're going to add a piece of coal as we have quite a bit. And uh, it will really ramp up the temperature. We're now at feels like of plus 12, which is great. Or are we? Did I actually end up with hypothermia here? Oh no. Something's making me feel tired. Yeah, no kidding. This is uh, very sad. I, in the last moment, got hypothermia. I'm not happy about that. Standing above freezing for 24 hours is very difficult, especially at the start of the game. going to cook some water. I'm so yep. tired. I will drink it. I am very low on water. Very thirsty. Good. And he is tired and is at the beginning of the night, which is pretty good timing. Nevertheless, I will uh, cook some more of this water. And now I'll throw some more coal in first. I don't want to be running out of time and wasting a match to relight it. I have the coal here. Melt that snow. You can only do half a liter at the time now. At any given time. Half a liter at a time and it takes longer than it used to. So they have really made things a little tougher here. Shall use this time to make ourselves a bunch of water because uh, we're going to need it in the long run. You can never have enough water, just like in real life. Let's see uh, how much do we have? 1.47 liters. Not very much. We do have some cattails though, which we can eat before sleeping, and we will need to because our health is very low. Time passes quick, doesn't it? Yeah, and the night has only just begun, which is not fantastic for timing. I am going to have to think about how I'm going to do this. Am I? I am going to need some. Extra time for sleeping. So I'm going to have to add quite a bit of coal for that. 
and uh, boulder sporter. I would like to have at least like two and a half liters. And then I think I will uh, pick up the can, add a little bit more coal to the furnace. Two hours, three minutes. Yeah. I'm going to need some sleep to recover health, otherwise, I will not make it. So I'm going to add enough coal for. Well. What have I got here? Five hours of sleep will, will do me very well. And uh, if you can see, being next to the furnace, um, I am still at a feels like of 44 degrees, which is great. So I'm going to be able to sleep five hours. And uh, before doing that, however, I need to eat, first of all, drink. Then, uh, let me think here. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to smash open this can of wet dog food and eat that. And, uh, my total calories now are 1077, and that should be. Mm, enough for five hours. I mean, it's definitely more than that, but uh, I know that the fire will go out in five hours, so I shouldn't be sleeping without the fire on, as it will probably be very cold. And we have recovered a little bit of health. It is terrible weather, so I'm not going to go out at this point. I think I'm going to just have to uh, add some more coal. Here goes all the coal. Here goes all the coal. Um, I will eat, add some more coal and cedar wood. 3 hours 49 minutes. Uh, that will be enough to go and sleep another three hours and hopefully the weather will be a little better at that point. We have recovered a little bit more health, not much, and the weather is still very foggy. However, uh, we have reached 30 minutes, and I'm going to make this the end of the episode. Uh, we will continue this in the next one. Now, if you did like it, then uh, please like it. If you want to be notified about the sequels, then uh, please subscribe and hit the little bell that notifies you when a new video comes because if you don't hit the bell you will not be notified so uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll see you on the next one where we will well we shall see what we will do